everybody, this is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations, and today I'm here to share with you how to make this album cover. And uh, basically, this album cover, this is this is the lay flat method that um, Tamara came up with. She's our leader and owner of Country Craft Creations, and uh, she came up with this method, and it's really easy to do. It's a lot easier um, to build. And it also, when you open the album, it lays completely flat. So it's really, really nice. It doesn't have the memory like when you wrap it all at once. Now, some of the albums, I do do that still. Um, but for most of them, I have been using this method. And um, I do it a little bit differently. But um, it does basically the same thing. So there's just a couple things we're going to need. So we're going to need our chipboard. We're going to need cardstock to cover our chipboard. Um, here's the spine piece of chipboard. I also did use some score tape sheets. And I have prepared my chipboard piece with those. Um, you will also need a piece of cardstock that will cover the inside of the spine. And then um, the tools you will need are really basic. So I use score tape sheets, and then I also use a quarter inch score tape here. Um, you're going to need some glue of some sort, and I love this art glitter glue. I've been a glue fan in the past, but when I discovered art glitter glue, I just kind of fell in love. This is the best stuff ever. And you can tell I use it a lot because the label is really messed up. Um, <laughs> you will need a bone folder, and I have several different bone folders, and they all do different um, things for me. This one is a little more blunt, so I don't risk ripping my paper when I'm covering my chipboard. So I really like this type, but you can use anything that you want. You'll need a pair of scissors. And then um, you don't need these specifically, but I love these. And when I got them, I was like, how did I ever live without these? These are spacers that I got from Country Craft Creations, and they are in the store. They are wonderful for doing these albums. So not only do they give you the correct placement of the chipboard onto your cardstock, but they also um, can serve as a one eighth inch spacer for other types of projects. So they're really, really awesome. So you'll, it, when you buy these, you, they come three to the package. You get two one inch spacers and then you get one that's one and a half inch and they're, they're all 12 inches long. So these are really awesome and I'm going to show you how we're going to use these. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's make this cover. Now this cover for this album that I am making is um, going to be, let me get my ruler here so I can tell you specifically, this is five and a half by seven and a half. So those are the front and back cover measurements. And then the spine for this particular album is going to be three inches by seven and a half okay so you can make you can use this method with any size cover that you want to make the thing that you need to remember is that the the cardstock that you pick to cover your um covers on the front and the back need to be one inch bigger on all four sides so this is uh five and a half by seven and a half so the paper that i picked um and i cut is nine and a half by seven and a half so one inch bigger on all sides so basically um, you'll want to take whatever your measurement for your card stock or card blah, chipboard is whatever the measurement is add two inches for, so, okay so if this is five and a half then you'll want it seven and a half wide this is seven and a half tall so you want to cut your card stock nine and a half tall okay that's all you need to do for your cover pieces so the front and back cover now for the spine it's a little bit different so you will want to add two inches to the height okay so this is seven and a half tall so i cut my uh card stock nine and a half but then you want it um one and a half inches on each side instead of just one because you're going to use those one and a half sides to actually adhere the spine to your cover so this is three inches so i add three inches to that because that will give me the inch and a half on either side. So I want to cut this, add three inches. So since this is three, I'm going to cut this at six. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So when you look at it, there's an extra three inches for the sides. There was only an extra two for the covers. And then there's an extra two inches for the height. Um, just like for the cover. I hope that makes sense. But that's basically the formula for making any album cover that you want to make. Now I've already wrapped one so that we don't have to, you know, do two on camera, but you just wrap the covers completely just like this. 
Um, what I usually like to do is do my spine first because I use a lot more glue on my spine than I do on my covers. And then what I do is I do the spine first and then I set it aside and let it dry and then do my covers and then we put it together. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So grab your spine piece, whatever size. This size is three by seven and a half. And then I have my cardstock that's six by nine and a half. And then grab your scoreboard. Your scoreboard, or at least mine does, have lip on it on both sides. So it actually gives you a place where you can kind of butt these things up against each other so you can square it off. So for a spine piece, you will need spacers. You'll need one of the one inch spacers and you'll need your one and a half inch spacer. The one and a half goes on this side and the one inch goes at the top. So you wanna make sure that's all nice and tight there and then take your score tape off. Now um, you can use glue, if I can get this off. Um, you can use glue, but I've found that um, if you use score tape, you get adhesion completely. And sometimes with glue, you might have like maybe a little bit of warping or miss a spot or something. And so it just makes for a really nice stick so that you get a complete stick all the way. So then just go ahead and put it in here, butting it up against this and then take these out and then you'll have the perfect placement. So you'll have an inch at the top and the bottom and you'll have an inch and a half on the sides, okay? So once you get that done, then you can grab um, some sort of a giant um, burnishing type tool. You can go ahead and just make sure that that's stuck really good, okay? And then we'll get rid of our scoreboard. We don't need that yet, right now. And then I'm gonna grab my smaller tool and then flip it over so the card stock is on the top and then with your finger kind of feel where the edge of the chipboard is and then take your bone folder and then run it down the side of your um, chipboard underneath so what we're doing is we're training the paper to kind of wrap around the chipboard and go the direction we want it to go so you're just going to do that on all four sides um, again I use this one because this bone folder isn't as sharp so I don't, I don't really want to, you know, poke a hole in the paper. Okay, so once you get your edges done, then what I like to do is go around and just fold it and kind of finish that process to just kind of wrap it around. I don't know what I got on there. Um, so anyways, once you're done with that, so what we're going to do is these wings right here, these one and a half inch pieces are going to attach to the covers. So we're not really going to do anything with those. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this around and glue it down. So what I do is I fold it around, I make sure that it's nice and burnished, and then when I get to the edge of the chipboard, I run my bone folder down the edge of the chipboard, okay, and um, make sure that it's kind of forming around the, the chipboard, okay, make sure the cardstock is forming around. And then I like to kind of just hold it with my finger and then burnish it out to the side. And you can see it kind of does kind of angle it in just a hair, um, but this is going to help cover the edges of the chipboard. So I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm just running my bone folder down the side and then I'm holding it with my finger so it doesn't move. And then I'm just pushing that out. Okay. So it's kind of, you can see it's kind of wrapping itself around the chipboard. And then what I like to do is grab my glue. Now this is art glitter glue. This is amazing stuff. And, um, since I've discovered it, I haven't used any other glue, um, I, I, do, I did use a lot of glue in the past, but once I found this stuff, totally in love with it. So um, this is, I get it from Country Craft Creations, and now that the weather's warming up, we're going to be able to get some more, because that's good, because I'm running out. Um, so then you just add the glue, and then I'm going to just go around and make sure that this is all glued down, okay? This covers the edges of my chipboard nicely. Um... Some of the designers and then Tamara cut the squares out. Um, I have a, I, I always manage to cut it too close and then it doesn't cover my chipboard right. And I have issues with it. So if um, you're like me and you have issues with, you know, your corners not getting covered, this is a really good way to do it. Okay. So now that I've got that done, then I'm just going to do it to the other side and then we're going to let it sit and we're going to let it dry Okay, so again, I'm going to fold that over and make sure it's nice and burnished around. And then 
I'm going to form it around my cardstock, or form my cardstock around my chipboard, and then hold it and then push out. Make sure that's nice and burnished, okay? Open it up, and then I'm just adding a little bit of glue around the edges, just a little bit, and then I'm going to glue this part here. And then once it's dry, after we get our covers done, it'll be plenty dry. Then what we're going to do is we're going to miter these just a little bit, okay? So don't worry about that. But this is this is the way that I have um, found that it works best for me. Um, but again, this is not my method. This is created by Tamara, who is the... Um, owner and founder of Country Craft Creations. Okay, so again, um, I'm using artisan cardstock, and then once um, once I get that done, then I just go back around on the outside and then I burnish it again. Okay, you can also go around and do it like this. You just want to make sure that everything is stuck and everything is burnished really well. Okay, so this is our spine piece, and we can go ahead and set this off to the side and let it dry, okay? So we'll do that. So now we're gonna wrap our second cover. So I've already got one of the covers done. It's already wrapped and ready to go. We're gonna do this, the same thing on the second side. So we're gonna do that next. So grab your chipboard. And again, this is five and a half by seven and a half. And my cardstock is seven and a half by nine and a half. And it is two inches bigger than the measurement of your chipboard. That's the formula. So then this time you're going to grab your two one-inch spacers, okay? And we're going to take off the backing of our score tape sheet. And I get that at Country Craft Creations, too. I love the score tape sheets. And they work perfect for making albums. Just absolutely perfect. So once you stick that down, then you're done with those spacers. And then you can grab your big burnishing tool and just kind of make sure that it's really good and stuck. Okay. All right, so then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go around the sides. We're gonna feel the edge of that chipboard. And I actually, I started doing this part here a while ago because I was thinking about when you score paper, you know, you want it to fold in a certain direction. That's why we're scoring it. And I had always done it on the opposite side, which never, it started to not make sense to me. Um, and then I decided to start doing this and it works much better. That's for sure. So whether you wrap the entire album at once or you're doing this lay flat method, um, it works really, really well. So just a little hint there. So then again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just kind of folding it around. And then this is where we're gonna grab our score tape and we're going to put score tape on all four sides. Now you'll notice that I'm not quite going to the corners of the cardstock because I'm gonna cut the corners off anyway here in just a minute. So I'm just not gonna go all the way to the corners there. All right, and then um, I'm pushing it down with my fingers, which uh, if you followed me, I use my fingers and my fingernails a lot, um, which I probably should use bone folders, but I don't. Um, anyway, <laughs> but once you get the score tape on here, then um, you can take your bone folder and kind of go around Make sure it's good and stuck. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the corners off. So when you cut the corners off, um, you try to go about a 45 degree angle, but you don't want to get it too close to the chipboard. You want about an eighth of an inch between the corner of your chipboard and where you're going to cut it. That little bitty piece is going to wrap around the corner of your chipboard and cover it up. I really, really like that. So, um, you can just cut uh, 45 degrees off, and um, it doesn't have to be super perfect exact. Now, there are tools out there that I have seen, and um, in the past, I have um, 
I made a tool out of chipboard, which of course didn't last very long. And then I kind of gave up on using it because it really doesn't have to be exact. But then I saw one of our other designers had a tool and I was like, oh, I love tools. So I, I went ahead and looked on Amazon and I ordered one. So <laughs> it's not quite what she had, but um, I'm going to try it and see if it's something that I want to work with. But um, we'll see. Sometimes it's just quicker just to whack it off with your scissors so we'll go with that but you'll notice that I have an eighth of an inch a, you know approximately between the corner of my chipboard and the corner of my cardstock okay so then grab your glue again and I usually go from top bottom and then side to side so that's kind of the way I do it but um, run a little bead of glue across the end of your chipboard now this will do a couple different things it not only helps adhere your chipboard to your cardstock on the edges but also, um, see, I'm using Artisan cardstock, which I absolutely love, and I've never had any problems with it whatsoever. But if you're using another cardstock or you're using pattern paper, sometimes they have a tendency to rip, um, which is something none of us want. So if that, if you use the glue along the edge of the chipboard. It kind of helps wet the paper a little bit and helps it form around and is less likely to rip. So, um, not that I'm thinking artisan cardstock is going to rip. It's not, but it's just kind of a habit that I got into and um, I like it. I like the way it works. And then it also helps adhere the, the edge of the, the cardstock to the chipboard, which I really like. Okay, so once you get the top and the bottom done, then what you're going to do is you're going to poke those sides in. Now, some people will use a bone folder. I find it easier just to use my thumbnail, but you're going to go from the outside and you're just going to kind of just tuck that in to the edge of your chipboard. You're just going to push that little eighth inch piece in just a little bit. Again, you can use your bone folder if you prefer. Um, either way, whatever works for you, then run a bead of glue. And then go ahead and wrap it again, okay? And that will cover those corners very nicely. And you just need a little bitty bit, but you can see that it folds over super nice and it covers the corner really perfectly. So um, that is that is how I do it. So again, just kind of push in with your fingernail or your bone folder, whichever you prefer, and then your bead of glue. Just give it just a second and then push it down and then use your bone folder and make sure that everything is done. So then once I'm done with that, I like to run my bone folder across the edges because then um, it helps it stick and also it helps square off the edges and I really like a squared edge on my chipboard so I like to run my bone folder around all the edges just to make sure it's nice and square okay so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your spine piece okay so we sh it should be nice and dry and then get your scissors and then what we're gonna do is don't go too close to the edge of the chipboard okay we've glued the cardstock to it but we don't want to expose it so you're just gonna go just beyond that kind of crease where we folded it just right there and we're going to miter that just a little bit okay so we're just going to take off just a little bit more okay just like that on all the sides but just don't go too close to your chipboard go right like right outside that line again it should be glued down so it shouldn't get exposed but um, yeah, I hate it when my chipboard gets exposed. If you're using white, it makes it a lot harder <laughs> to cover that chipboard. If you're using a black cardstock, then, you know, if that happens, you can grab a Sharpie and you can color the edge of the chipboard and that will help. But anyway, so um, I've mitered that just a little bit. So now we're going to just attach these together. So grab your scoreboard again, because we're going to need to have a straight edge and I'm using mine sideways so I can do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Just put this so that the outside of your cover is up, okay? And we're going to adhere this just right directly to 
that wing that we made, okay? So, and it's going to go right to the edge of this chipboard, okay? So then in order to do that, we gotta use some adhesive. So we're not gonna use glue right up close to the spine because it's been discovered that if you do the glue, then it could seep out and it could glue the actual cardstock from the cover to the spine and then it'll rip when you open and close it if it glues shut. You don't wanna do that. So um, what we've been doing is add a piece of score tape all the way down, but don't go too close to the edge of the spine, okay? So I've got a little bit more than about an eighth of an inch there. And then I'll put another piece of score tape here on the edge of the wing, okay? And then when you take this one, we're ready to stick it down. I'm gonna take this off. And then I'm gonna run some glue right down the middle. Got a fuzzy on here. Oh boy. Just like that. And then I'm gonna push it down so it's on the lip of my scoreboard so it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna grab this piece. And then just like I said, I'm just gonna lay that down right to the edge. Okay, and turn it over and burnish it. And it should be pretty flush. Okay, so not on top of each other, just right to the edge. Okay, so now because we kept the score tape away from the edge, when you bend it, you're not going to see the score tape. Okay, um, and then if, since there's no glue to the edge, then it's not going to seep out and it's not going to glue to itself. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So we're just going to repeat for the other side. So we'll go ahead and put a piece of score tape pretty close but not to the edge put a piece of score tape at the edge of this wing all right we'll take that off and add our bit of glue and then the other thing too that I like to do is since I pushed it to this edge. I'm going to go ahead and put it upside down and do it on the other edge. That way, if there's any kind of discrepancy in the chipboard as far as like the height of this and stuff, it, you know, the top edge will be nice and flat. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So there we go. And that is how you wrap your chipboard. All right. So we have our album cover, and you can see that it's gonna lay nice and flat. It's not going to have any issues with, you know, an album that won't lay flat, and then you can't turn your pages very well. It also closes really nicely, so a lot of times you don't even need to have a closure because there's no memory in the spine you know, to keep it open. So um, a lot of times, you know, you don't even have to use a closure if you don't want to. Okay, so then the last step to making this is that you need to have a piece of paper that will cover the spine, okay? So this paper is cut at, I don't know where all these fuzzies are coming from, um, the same width as the paper that we cut to cover the spine. So it's gonna be six inches wide, okay? And it's going to be, since this is seven and a half tall, this is seven and three eighths tall. So I cut it one eighth inch shorter than, you know, the height of the album so that it's in just a little bit. So then um, I use score tape on this as well. I'm gonna take all this off and I did use pieces of it to kind of patchwork it together, but um, it works much better if you use score tape and then just center it. Now, however you want to center it, I usually will do it sideways and then just put it like to the edge of the paper from the spine and then center it top to bottom and lay it down, okay? Then go ahead and burnish it down and then grab your other bone folder and this one again, because it's not as sharp, I prefer this for this particular part. Um, and honestly, that's the only time I ever use this bone folder is for making covers. But then just fold your cover up where the spine meets the back cover and then just burnish it. And then do the same thing, just bend it slightly and then just kind of go in that groove, just to kind of help it. All right, and then you can finish it the rest of the way. And then 
you are done. So there's our cover made. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Again, the, the formula for the covers, however you cut your chipboard for your front and back cover, add two inches to the height and the width of the paper you're covering it with. For the spine piece, however you cut it, whatever size, add two inches to the height, add three inches to the width for the card, or the, yeah, the card stock to cover it. All right, use score tape sheets. It works really, really good. Um, the paper to cover the inside, same width as the paper you cut to cover the spine, and then cut it one eighth inch shorter than the height of your album. All right, so that's it. That is the formula. And you guys, once you try this, you're going to love this. So now, you can fill it with whatever you want and do with it whatever you want. So there you go. There's the cover. And I will be back with more. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.